Ciao, troviamo il posto, non so se ci sentono. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. We hear you. Oh, nice. Hi, hi Eric, how are you? Here's Mark with me. Hi, how are you? Hi. The sun is shining in Trento. Ah, fine. <laughs> you make us jealous. Uh, we can't. Uh... Forse no, forse perché lui parla. Stefania, just a little check. Can you hear me? I just wanted to say that I couldn't hear uh, Erwin Strasser, but it's just because he can't speak. Sorry. <laughs> I can't. Okay, but that's good news, Stefania. That's good news. Uh, then we start here by. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Schools in Italy, the Netherlands, and good morning, schools in Suriname. Uh, on behalf of the virus scanner team, I'd like to give you a warm welcome at the International Online Teachers Day of Virus Scanner Edition 2021 and 2022. Um, this afternoon, we have a beautiful program for you. Uh, and I would like to give a short introduction. We go through the schedule and then uh, we quickly start. So we uh, start with a, a lecture of uh, Eric van Goor. He gives an introduction about infectious diseases uh, in 2021. Then we move uh, to Marlies Wagner from the University of Applied Sciences in uh, Rotterdam. And she gives a lecture about hygiene and lifestyle as the cornerstone for prevention of the spread of infectious diseases. And that's the first part. And then we go to the second part. And the second part is really about the virus scanner program. So Wilco Zwenis will give an explanation about the project outline and about the timeline. So uh, how will this year look? Uh, he will give an explanation about the masterclass and about the international final day. 
And then Melise, one of the fire scanner coaches, will give you a quick insight about uh, support during the project um, through the fire scanner team. And she, she will talk about this later on. And to close, uh, Elisa van der Hoef, also one of the fire scanner coaches, she will give um, a short insight about the scientific evaluation of the fire scanner project. So um, I think we can quickly start and I just uh, would uh, give you uh, room for questions uh, after Wilco's presentation. So in the second part, uh, that's about the fire scanner project after Wilco's presentation and after um, Lisa's presentation, there's room for questions. And of course, at the end, uh, so during the closure, you can, uh, you can mention in the chat that you have a question and then uh, you, can, uh, you can ask right away. Um, there are a, a couple of videos and maybe sometimes the audio quality uh, will fluctuate be because of the online setting. Um, but it's just as a little uh, pause in between the lectures. So uh, I would love to uh, give the space to, uh, to Eric, but first start with the kickoff movie of 2022. So good afternoon. I hope that you can see my slides. Uh, do we see the slides, Valerie? Uh, yes, we do, but it's Hi. not uh, in presentation mode yet. Okay, we're going to change that. Hmm. Now it is, I hope. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, everybody, a warm welcome also from uh, from my side. Um, we started with a short uh, movie from the virology department uh, in Rotterdam, just to have a brief look uh, uh, inside. And of course, uh, normally we have a meeting uh, in Erasmus. Now it's all virtual. And I will start with a short presentation about infectious diseases anno uh, 2021, 22 almost, uh, to have a brief, brief introduction. It's a lecture uh, I also give in, in the master class that will be in February, but just to make you as teachers uh, familiar <clears throat> with what is, uh, well, what, what's going around. 
So this is a picture from a fire scanner, and a picture made once in, in Suriname, in one of the schools, uh, in one of the classes in, during an introduction uh, lecture. Um, so we're talking about fire scanner, and if we talk about fire scanner, it, it's about, about knowledge, um, uh, knowledge to start awareness and knowledge as an antidote. That, that's the slogan of the, of the project. <clears throat> Uh, it's quite obvious that we, the, we want to involve the next generation, so that are, are, the, are the students, because th th those are the ones that uh, can make a difference uh, in, the, in, in the future. And I think COVID very clearly shows how important it is that the general public, uh, but also young students, are involved in infectious diseases. It is something that, <clears throat> um, that, that, uh, that, that's so central. Uh, we all have to deal with it. So it's good to involve the next generation uh, in this field. So as I said before, um, prevention starts by knowledge. Um, it's not that you have to become a virologist uh, to become aware and, and to do to work in prevention, but you need a bit of knowledge to know what is an infectious diseases, a disease, how is it transmitted, uh, and how can I prevent? Uh, Siren Foundation is the foundation that that uh, organizes uh, fire scanners and makes it uh, possible. And uh, beside fire scanner, we also uh, support uh, research to understand uh, diseases and to come to better treatment uh, by better understanding. And that's all. That's also about knowledge. So this is some uh, some pictures from my research group. So we're working in the field of emerging viral infections. COVID is just one of them. And uh, to do that work, we, we come in, in several countries. And here you see some pictures from Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam. But you also see a picture uh, at, at the right bottom <clears throat> um, in Suriname, in the academic hospital in Paramaribo, and uh, left bottom you see a, a picture in Surabaya, in, in, in the hospital, in the university hospital in Surabaya, Indonesia. Um, so this, well, this can be a statement, a fire is free world. I want you to think about this, if, if this is a, a statement that, that is realistic, and I come back to that later. Is this what we want, a fire is free world? Or is there something different uh, that, that could be or should be our dream? I come back to that later. I'd like to introduce you the term One Health. And if you work in the field of infectious diseases and also the students uh, uh, will, uh, will, uh, be, will read about One Health, the One Health concept in, in, in infectious diseases is, is becoming very central and very important. And it, it just means that if you work on solutions, you cannot only work as a clinical doctor or as a researcher, um, you have to, to to collaborate uh, between collaboration between different fields. So the medical field, healthy humans, healthy animals. Uh, I will briefly mention that afterward, but many of the infectious diseases do come from an animal reservoir. So uh, they are transmitted from animal to humans. <clears throat> uh, and then we, it has to do with environment and healthy environment. And altogether, this is what we mean with the term one health and certainly the students will read about this if, if they uh, become uh, experts in, uh, in infectious disease. So this is the term emerging infectious diseases. These are those infections that have the potency to become to spread very easily among people and cause disease and, and also mortality. So people die from this infectious disease. That's what we mean with the term emerging infectious disease. And many of them are neglected diseases, and this means that we are not very aware of these diseases. They are around, <clears throat> they are not causing problems now, we are not aware, they are neglected. And neglected, it does not only mean that we are not aware, but then it also means there's no money uh, uh, to develop uh, <clears throat> uh, appropriate drugs, but also vac vaccines. Well, as I said before, uh, is that most of the infectious diseases, the new ones, <clears throat> are coming from animals, from an animal reservoir. And with uh, that's the term uh, we use for that is it's these are zoonotic infections. So an animal reservoir means that the infectious disease is present in animals. They don't get sick themselves, 
uh, but they uh, can transmit the virus to, to humans. And this, then we talk about the zoonotic infectious disease. And around three quarter of the infectious diseases are coming from an animal reservoir. And this means that it is very important the way we live with our domestic animals, but also with wild animals. And this is just an example. These are lovely small dogs. <clears throat> well, this can be very uh, harmless. But it may also be that these uh, uh, animals uh, do have uh, an infection, uh, and it, we call it uh, rabies, ons uh, dolat in, in, in Dutch. And this uh, is a very serious infectious disease. So be aware if you are in contact with animals, be aware that there may be a risk for transmission of an infectious disease. So we are confronted with new outbreaks. COVID is just an example. Um, it even became pandemic, and that, that's a very uh, special thing, of course. The question is, where do they come from? And can we predict what will be the next epidemic or pandemic? And are we prepared for such a new uh, outbreak? Uh, so this is a, a picture uh, just showing you the decline in, in the, in the uh, presence of infectious diseases. It, it started in the beginning of 1900. Then you see a peak at 1918, that was the Spanish flu, uh, the flu pandemic with a, a mortality of around uh, 40 million uh, uh, people uh, worldwide. And then you see in 1914, the <clears throat> uh, penicillin, the first uh, uh, antibiotic is, uh, is introduced. But before that, there's also a dramatic decline in infectious disease. And this has all to do with hygiene. So still hygiene was the main cause of the decline in infectious disease. And what we learned during COVID, that still hygiene is, is, is the backbone of in the prevention of infectious disease. Of course, vaccines are uh, important and, and antivirals and, and uh, antibiotics, they are important, but hygiene remains the cornerstone. And that's what we learned, I think, very obvious with, uh, uh, with the uh, COVID outbreak <laughs> pandemic. Well, this is a very important um, slide. Here we see all the transmission routes. So how can infectious diseases be transmitted via food, water, mosquitoes, rodents, bloodborne, airborne like COVID-19 and sexual transmitted diseases. So if people are aware where do infections come from, how are they transmitted, then that also is to start how can I prevent transmission and that has a lot to do with, or all to do with hygiene and lifestyle. And uh, Marlies will talk about that uh, later. So we can wait for vaccines, but the first thing we have to do immediately uh, is change our lifestyle and uh, take, <clears throat> take action in, in hygiene. So for the 20, 2022, the new virus kind of project, we, these are the viruses that we selected. We made a selection of viruses that are very important worldwide and, and, and actual, um, so they are around the corner. Well, this is a list the WHO, so the World Health Organization uh, made, and they made a list of the, the most prominent uh, health uh, uh, threats, uh, and this was in 2019. And here you see several things that are a threat for our for our health and what you see it's it's not only infectious disease but many are infectious disease it's about air pollution non-communicable diseases it, it's like heart disease vascular disease also cancer um, it also has to do with economic status uh, countries with weak primary health cares and 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 weak uh, hospital settings but, but what you also see is that many of the threats we are confronted with and, and the WHO takes into precaution are infectious diseases like influenza, um, people not taking vaccines, dengue, still HIV is on the list. And at the bottom, you see this E6, that is that disease that we are not aware of. Uh, we never have seen it before, or it might be an old disease that, is, that uh, will be reintroduced. Um, so we must be aware for, for disease X, something that we did not see before and we are not aware of. Well, just examples of some infectious diseases in the news. I think measles is a very good, or you could say bad example for Europe, 
there are uh, outbreaks in, in Europe. It, it's a preventable disease. We do have a vaccine, so it can be eradicated even. Uh, but that we did not manage that yet. And uh, there are more people not taking the, the vaccine. And now the last five to 10 years, we see arch outbreaks, large outbreaks uh, in, in <laughs> European countries, also in Italy and also in uh, France and, and also in the Netherlands. Uh, and that's because people yes. are not uh, aware of the disease anymore. Yes. They are not vaccinating their children. And we do see more measles uh, cases. Uh, and measles is a, a disease where uh, young children can die. Uh, they can die due to measles, which is a serious disease. Well, this is another example, a new virus that, that had been introduced last year, 2020, in the Netherlands, West Nile virus. It's uh, formerly it was a tropical virus, and it has been introduced uh, in the Netherlands. It has to do with the virus has been introduced. It, the, the bird is the reservoir. Uh, so birds do bring the, the virus, uh, well, into the population. And you need a mosquito because the mosquito is transmitted from bird to human by, by mosquitoes. So this means that something changed in our, well, environment, that the bird, the mosquito, and the host, we are the host, are coming together and infection is transmitted. And you see how the mosquito brings the virus from birds to human and to horses. Well, this slide I'd like to show um, uh, to, to clearly state that new infectious diseases are not from something from far away. It is not something from the east, uh, the west, the north, or the south, but new infections can pop up and outbreaks can start anywhere. Um, and so that's not only in, in, in uh, first or second uh, <clears throat> Uh, economical, uh, less developed countries, but also in the in, in Western countries. And it also states that we need to collaborate uh, in the prevention uh, of infectious disease. And it is only also clearly shown by the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic. If we don't collaborate, if countries don't collaborate, we don't manage uh, to control the, the pandemic. So where do infections come from? Well, this is the picture that states, well, if you look to the world population, a large ma uh, majority of the population still is living under these kind of uh, uh, circumstances. The people live, do live very close together. Hygiene is not ideal. You see that people do live uh, closely to their animal. They are economically dependent from this animal, but we learned that most infections do come from animal, transmitted from animal to humans, so anotic infections. You see the water, so mosquitoes do need this water to breathe, but the water is not clean, so water and foodborne infections uh, and, and outbreaks uh, can occur in this uh, in, in these circumstances. You see the carpets around the houses, there will be rodents uh, near the carpets and rodent-borne infections and outbreaks will occur in these kind of situations. Well, this is an example of uh, in, in a picture I made in Indonesia, uh, flooding of a village. You see on, on the picture and the boys, they're even laughing uh, <clears throat> under this kind of circumstance. And it shows that they are very much aware. And, and this is a common situation in this kind of villages. So once, or sometimes two or three times a year, their village is, is flooded. And after a flooding like this, you see outbreaks, uh, mainly mosquito-borne infections because mosquitoes need water, but also rodents. Uh, and different outbreaks can occur, and also water and foodborne infections. So this means that environment, uh, environmental circumstances are very important in the transmission and the risk for new epidemics and, and also pandemics. What can we predict? And this is a very well complicated picture, but you see the virus. If, we, if a virus is introduced, virus do mutate. We all learned that with COVID. So you get new strains, and those strains may be uh, may cause more mild disease or more serious disease. So virus change over time. You see the host, we are the host. So we have a different suspectability for developing disease. If you're living with a different uh, genetic background and ethnic background, it might be that you are more or less suspectable for developing disease. It also has to do with environment. That's what we learned before. And if you have seen previous infections uh, and maybe that you already have a kinds of uh, cross protection for this kind of infections. So many factors do play a role 
in defining if a new infection uh, in the end will cause disease and mortality uh, and what will be the imp impact uh, on, on society. Well, are we prepared? It all starts with awareness and for awareness, you need some knowledge. <clears throat> and that's all what, where virus scanner is going about, <clears throat> raising awareness. And if you are aware, you can take action, you can prepare yourself and uh, prevent, uh, prevent uh, being infected. Well, research, of course, is very important uh, in, in, in the fire science department in Aras, we do a lot of research also on vaccines, on new antiviral drugs. If you look to the vaccine development, and I think many of you learned uh, about in, in the past two years, how long does it take to develop a vaccine? Well, here you see it that can take on average about 10 to 15 years. In, in COVID, it was much faster because the first steps, and here you see the preclinical steps, many of those steps were already taken uh, in previous uh, work. And that meant that, well, the resulted in a, a good vaccines uh, in, in a year time, <clears throat> but that's very exceptional. So normally to take all these steps from the laboratory, that's the preclinical part, um, introducing the vaccine in the first humans subjects, that is phase one, then to phase two in a larger proportion, uh, all these steps take takes years. Um, and during uh, vaccine development and drug development, you first look at safety, a drug and a vaccine should be safe. If it's not safe, uh, uh, development will, will, will stop. And the second one is, of course, effectiveness of your drug and, uh, and your vaccine. But safety is, is the first thing you're looking at. Well, if you do this kind of, of work and, and vaccine development, this is an example in our department and, and with, our, with, with my, student, with my uh, research group, we do vaccine trials and here you've seen what you need. Of course, you need all the regulatory authorities. They have to approve your, your, uh, your vaccine, for instance. Uh, so it has to be approved. You need a study team, the pharmacist, you need your laboratory, research laboratory. You need volunteers who want to be vaccinated and, and, and they participate in, in, in the trial. And of course, your clinical staff, so your medical doctors who are uh, running and managing uh, the trial. So a lot is needed to, to test new drugs and, and new vaccines. Well, about research, if you look to emerging and pandemic potential, pandemic viruses, many, they can uh, pop up anywhere, everywhere and on, on every place that, that, that has been shown on a, on a previous slide. And with my group, we do work in, in different countries because many of the infections are not in Europe yet, but they may be transferred to Europe. But it is good and interesting to collaborate with colleagues from Suriname, but also in Indonesia, Brazil, uh, South Africa uh, to, to join forces to work uh, uh, on the prevention of infectious diseases. And these are some, some pictures. These uh, are some pictures made in 2016 during the Zika virus outbreak in Suriname. We were closely together with colleagues in Suriname. This is a picture from the academic hospital in, in Suriname, here in the, in the hospital on the ward. And these are some pictures from, uh, from Indonesia. And uh, this is in uh, Surabaya. Uh, you, you see the hospital, but you see, also see some pictures of schools participating in the virus scanner project at that time uh, in Surabaya. Well, if you talk about the prevention of infectious diseases, science and public uh, communication is, is very important. I think, um, <clears throat> Uh, it, it, I don't have to state that now under, under COVID circumstances, we know how important it is to, to get the public informed, uh, especially now with, with uh, vaccine uptake. If people are not well informed, they will not take the vaccine. Uh, miscommunication is a big issue. Uh, how are people informed and which information is coming to the people? Uh, can they decide and, and make their own decision based on, on the right uh, information? So it's, if you talk about prevention of infectious disease, it's, it's about behavior, it's about lifestyle and hygiene, and it is about behavioral change. 
do I want to change uh, my lifestyle to prevent infectious diseases? It's not only vaccination, but especially also the way we live and the way uh, we are dealing with our environment, with our animal. Uh, how do we live with them? Um, well, we can say that people create a risk because also if you look in terms of COVID, we are the ones that, enab that enable the virus um, to get grip on, on, on our communities. So we do create a risk. But at the same time, we are the key to the solution if we want to change our lifestyle and take hygiene measures uh, seriously. Mm. So human behavior is, is, is the key word in, in, in the prevention of infectious disease. This is an example from, from the Ebola outbreak that was in 2014, maybe you remember. And this is a picture uh, made uh, from the situation in the United States, well, we can say Western country, developed country, but there was a big panic at that uh, time. People were not informed, they were very much afraid and they made decisions made about uh, unawareness, uh, miscommunication. Um, and one of the things they, they said, well, let's close borders for all the African countries, then we are uh, protected. And that was not a very realistic uh, decision. It was all based about, uh, about, uh, about the panic that, that, that was present at that time. So this is a very good example of how important public education uh, is. Another big thing, of course, is the anti-vaccination uh, campaign. Uh, that's, that's, I think, in all countries, it, it's a worldwide uh, problem. For many diseases, we do have good vaccines. There are e even diseases that can be eradicated. I mentioned measles uh, earlier. But if people are not aware of, of the diseases any, anymore, or if there's miscommunication, for instance, with, uh, with, uh, around uh, COVID-19 COVID uh, vaccines, people do not take that vaccine. And that, of course, is a pity, especially if you can, uh, if these vaccines are very effective and, and safe. We'll skip this one. I think many of you heard about this, the R0. So that is uh, how infectious is an, an infectious disease is, or another way to say, if one person is infected, how many other persons can be infected? And the, the higher the air count is, the more easy it, it is for one person to infect um, to infect other people. So for COVID-19, it is between uh, around one. Uh, if it is above one, you, you do have the beginning of an epidemic. If it is below one, an epidemic will, uh, will fade out. And for, for, for measles, for instance, it is around 18. That means that one person can easily infect 18 other people. So measles is a very, very infectious disease. Uh, well, this is about herd immunity. Uh, well, previously I had to explain this, but I think you, were, you all became experts. Uh, uh, and you know what herd immunity is. So if it, enough people do have, um, uh, immunity for an infection, either by, because they they uh, they got the infection and they built up natural immunity, or they got immunity by a vaccine, then the virus in the end will not get grip on the community, uh, and uh, the, the epidemic will uh, will fade out. So I'm coming to my last uh, slides. So virus scanners about knowledge as antivirus. Um, so with knowledge, we start awareness. And with awareness, you can, you can uh, change attitude. And I strongly believe that, uh, that, that uh, knowledge, awareness, and attitude, and the change of behavior is the cornerstone of, of infectious disease. Um, of course, vaccines are important, but it takes time, money uh, to develop uh, them. And uh, if it if we talk about outbreak, we don't have that time. So we, the first thing you have to do, start with lifestyle change, hygiene, um, and that has to do with, uh, with, this, uh, with this quote, knowledge as antidote. Well, as, as I started, I, we strongly believe that the next generation, that <clears throat> this is a nice project, but also very important because well, we make the next generation to be involved in this in this relevant uh, uh, subject, it, it really matters. Um, it has it is not only about 
infectious disease. It's about environment. It is about society. It has all those different aspects. And this year, we do have three countries, um, different schools in the Netherlands, uh, one in Italy and two in Suriname. And this is my last, uh, last slide. So thanks for your attention. And I give the, back, uh, the word back to, to Valerie. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. And uh, for the teachers and professors, if you have any questions after this uh, lecture, please write them down uh, in the chat and then uh, Eric already can, uh, can read those questions and we come later back to them. Um, right now, I would love to give the word to, to Marlies. Marlies uh, Wagner, she's from the University of Applied Sciences in Rotterdam. And Eric already made the bridge to hygiene and lifestyle as the cornerstone for prevention of the spread of infectious diseases. And Marlies will uh, talk about that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will try to share uh, my screen. Uh, where is it? <laughs> share. Can you see the first slide, everybody? Yes. yes? Yeah. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Valerie, and thank you, Eric, for the invitation uh, to tell you a little bit more uh, this afternoon about uh, hygiene and lifestyle as the cornerstones of prevention of the spread of infectious diseases. Uh, first, a short introduction of myself. Uh, as Valerie already uh, told you, uh, is that I'm uh, from the Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences. Uh, originally, I'm a physiotherapist, uh, and now I'm uh, working since, I think, 12 years or something, uh, as a teacher and researcher at the university. Uh, since about 10 years also, uh, I'm involved in all kinds of projects together with uh, Eric uh, and his colleagues. Uh, about uh, infectious diseases. Uh, for example, uh, together we developed a multidisciplinary guideline uh, about HIV and work. Uh, and also my PhD uh, research uh, was on HIV and work. Um, and since uh, two years, um, I'm working also uh, as a project developer for the Medical Delta Living Lab Fit for Life. It's a long uh, name. Uh, but what we do is uh, together with uh, universities, uh, University of Applied Sciences, government, uh, uh, companies, etc. together we create all kinds of projects uh, about a healthy lifestyle and how to uh, create a healthy lifestyle for everybody. And why do we do that? And uh, what we also try to figure out is how uh, health technology can play a role in obtaining a healthy lifestyle uh, for everybody. Uh, so that's uh, me uh, in a short uh, <laughs> introduction. Uh, why do we talk about healthy lifestyle? I think you will all know, but just to uh, summarize, uh, a healthy lifestyle is healthy uh, food, eating healthy and having a healthy diet. Uh, healthy lifestyle is also having enough uh, physical exercise during the day. Uh, sleep well, uh, for example, like seven till nine hours a night. Uh, and of course, you will all know that a healthy lifestyle uh, also means that you don't have to be uh, addicted to smoking uh, alcohol or drugs. Uh, it's important to uh, relax uh, enough time during the day, so have good stress management. And a very important component, which uh, Eric already mentioned, is hygiene. Uh, in most models uh, used by, for example, uh, example general practitioners, uh, like you can see in the um, here in the Leefstijl Roer, which is loose, uh, used by general practitioners in the Netherlands, uh, hygiene is not an uh, is not a component. But we think uh, it's very important to take into account personal and environmental hygiene uh, uh, within a healthy lifestyle. So if you just uh, incorporate uh, hygiene and healthy lifestyle, it might be easier to talk about it and to uh, obtain a healthy lifestyle and also a uh, healthy hygiene. For example, hand hygiene, uh, yeah, or Eric already told it, uh, for example, with COVID is very uh, important, which I will show you later. Um, 
Well, the COVID-19 epidemic, I think you, uh, you know, have read many newspapers. Uh, I did this presentation, I think, two years ago, last year also, and then it was quite new, but now we all read so many newspapers about COVID-19. I, I hope and I think uh, you also recognize already that healthy lifestyle uh, plays a role in, uh, in the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, I think you've read in newspapers, for example, as you can read here, um, that um, COVID-19 uh, emphasized the role of lifestyle in the DC scores. Uh, what we saw in the beginning that when COVID-19 just came up, that th there was news about uh, that people, obese people had uh, worse disease scores than uh, people without obese. And now we already have a lot of new research which shows that indeed uh, a lifestyle plays a role in the disease scores. But also uh, lifestyle was in the news, um, for example, during lockdowns, uh, as we have now, uh, we can, uh, our children are not allowed to, uh, to sport after uh, five o'clock. So uh, at night, they can't go to the basketball, football, or uh, uh, whatever uh, sports club. Um, and that's what we saw during the COVID-19 uh, epidemic and still see that during uh, lockdowns, it's harder for people to uh, obtain their, uh, or to uh, conduct their healthy, uh, healthy lifestyle. Um, so from research, we saw that obesity, uh, hypertension, uh, cardiovascular disease and diabetes uh, were risk factors uh, for hospitalization, but also for ICU admission. And even mortality rates were higher uh, among patients uh, with these kinds of chronic diseases. Um, but how does it work in uh, general? First, this slide. Uh, there have been a lot of research uh, on lifestyle and COVID, uh, but also on lifestyle and other uh, infectious diseases, because COVID is one uh, example, but it's also uh, already in, I think, 2009, uh, there were some studies about uh, the relation between lifestyle and uh, influenza. Uh, but also you can imagine that a healthy lifestyle is also important for prevention of the norovirus. So it's not only COVID, but COVID now is the easiest uh, example of a virus infection related to, uh, to the healthy lifestyle. Um, there are many researches uh, uh, done and many uh, articles published about uh, this relation. Um, and if you would like to read more about it, if you just search uh, on a healthy lifestyle and uh, virus infections on, for example, uh, PubMed, you will find um, many uh, articles. So just to show that there is uh, a lot of research about this. Um, well, how does it work? Well, if you don't uh, have that, li that healthy lifestyle, which I was talking about, so if you uh, do not eat healthy and uh, have a lot of stress, the chance that you will, uh, will get obese or you will uh, obtain diabetes is bigger than if you have a healthy lifestyle. And if you do have uh, these chronic illnesses, um, you know, you, it's harder for your immune system to do his work. Uh, and if your immune system fails, you can imagine then you are uh, more susceptible for a virus, viral infection. So it's very important to be aware that um, you have a choice to uh, create a healthy lifestyle and in that way you and not uh, will obtain chronic diseases like obesity or diabetes, but also uh, you will uh, have a better prevention uh, for viral infections such as, such as COVID. But as uh, Eric already uh, told us, yeah, it's not only COVID, it's all, uh, all kinds of virus infections. Um, well, also Eric already uh, told us about the uh, changing behavior. Um, well, if we would like people to have a healthy lifestyle, you can just say, well, you have to eat healthy or you have to have less stress, but that's very easy to say and it's very hard to, uh, to do. Like, I think we all uh, know, uh, for me, I'm uh, teaching and working on a healthy lifestyle every day. But also for me, uh, in the evening, it's very easy to eat something which I know it's better not to do that or, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to, to move today. Um, so behavioral change is very difficult, but it's not impossible. So that's why in our projects with our uh, living lab, but also at our university, uh, I'm trying to teach and my colleagues here also, um, that it's very important to change your uh, lifestyle and why it's so important. 
So that's why we try to do with our projects and uh, lessons, um, and also with Fiber Scanner, we hope that if we teach the young and uh, the new generation, um, that it will be easier uh, in the future. Um, so with our projects, uh, for example, we try to uh, change lifestyle uh, of people in Rotterdam, uh, but it's quite hard. And not only because uh, it's very hard to change your behavior, but also some other as aspects, which I will mention shortly. Um, I think you will recognize it, but uh, in the world, there's a lot of health inequality uh, in Europe, but also in the, in the whole world. And I think it's important to mention this and also to mention and to uh, tell this to the students that they know it's not so easy. Uh, it's not only changing behavior, but it's more than that. Because we see in Europe, um, there's still a difference between Western Europe and Eastern Europe. Uh, but also in between countries, um, there's a big difference between the, the health of uh, different groups of people. As I said, uh, I told about the projects in Rotterdam. Uh, we see in Rotterdam, in uh, uh, one community, uh, the health is, is worse than in other communities. Um, so health is influenced by uh, many social factors like education, the employment status, income level, uh, gender, uh, ethnicity. Um, so that also uh, all those components uh, influence the health of somebody. So um, I think it's just important to, to know that there are so many uh, things we have to take into account if we uh, would like to change uh, somebody's health. And uh, one aspect which I will uh, mention um, is health literacy, um, because I think it's very important also for the students to be aware that health literacy uh, is very important to take into account if they develop uh, something, some innovation, for example, and they think, oh, I just drop it. But it's very important that, to realize that health literacy is, is important to take into account. Uh, I think you know what it is, but here's a, a one definition. Uh, health lit literacy is the ability to access, understand, appraise, and use information to make healthy choices. Because if somebody don't understand um, that it's important not to smoke, or uh, they have a really different definition of what's being healthy, and um, we would like them to change their behavior, uh, if they don't understand the information we give about uh, healthy behavior, then they won't change their behavior. Um, so I hope and I, what I see with our students, if we um, learn them about health literacy, they understand their uh, patients better um, and they can, well, even better increase, uh, uh, well, they can better help people with a healthy behavior um, and increasing health literacy may reduce health inequalities. So if we start there, then we hopefully uh, also can make those uh, changes in uh, health uh, smaller. Um, so it's very important to uh, create accessible information for everybody. So I hope it's uh, also in the virus scanner project this year that uh, the students will take that into, uh, into account. Um, so fire, fire scanner, yeah, I really uh, love the program because it's so nice to see how the young students um, think about prevention of uh, virus infections. And I hope this year, uh, um, again, they want to take into account the role of uh, lifestyle and uh, hygiene. Um, and also that they take into account that uh, not everybody can just understand everything. So. Um, if you develop something, try to think, OK, who's my target group? Uh, what's their level um, of how can they understand information? How, what do they think about what I uh, develop so that they just try to uh, come as close as possible to the uh, to the target group for who they will develop something? That was very short, my presentation. Uh, I can tell a lot more about <laughs> lifestyle, but um, if you have any questions, you can just send me an email or whatever. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Marlies. <laughs> and uh, indeed, if you have any questions for Marlies, please write them down in the chat and we come later back uh, to the questions. 
So this was the first part of the program about um, infectious diseases. So what are infectious diseases? How do they occur and how to prevent them? Um, and now we go to the second part of the program and that's about virus scanner, about the project. And I would like to pass the virtual microphone to uh, Wilco Zwenis of uh, Stichting Technasium. Uh, but first we start with a short warming up for this uh, second part by showing the virus scanner trailer. Hey, fire scanners, uh, welcome in uh, Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam. I'm Erik van Gorp, uh, professor in clinical virology at Erasmus and founder of the fire scanner program. Uh, I shortly like to introduce the fire scanner program and uh, introduce our fire scanner team. Do you follow me? I'm Elisa and I'm studying medicine at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. I'm involved with the Virus Scanner project for the first time this year and I hope to see you all soon. Hi there, my name is Marlies. I'm teacher and researcher at Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences and I hope to see you soon at Virus Scanner. Bye-bye. So the project will start uh, with a teacher's uh, day. There will be a very interesting masterclass and we will end up with the final day with participants from Italy Suriname and the Netherlands in April uh, next year. So here we are at the virology department, uh, the laboratory. What you see here is that the material from patients uh, from the hospital is coming in and we define if patients suffer from a virus uh, infection. Uh, the other things we are doing here is research. Research on, on new antiviral treatment and also research on new uh, vaccines. My name is Leanne. I'm working as a medical doctor and a researcher at the Department of Virus Science. As a virus scanner coach, I will help the participants with their ideas and their questions. I hope to see you soon in the virus scanner project. All right, uh, Wilco Zwenis, are you in the session? Yes. Look for my presentation. You can see it now. Yes, we do. Not yet in the presentation mode, but we see the slides. Yes, there it is. <laughs> okay, welcome uh, everybody, um, and. Uh, project uh, description for the students but also the movie you have seen uh, uh, yet uh, already sent also to all the schools so you can use that for the for the students when they start with the project and first of all i like to take a look at the project uh, itself and after that uh, um, uh, we go on with the organization and everything uh, for the students um, besides the projects uh, um, and a lot of things uh, Eric said, but also Marlies said, is all, uh, also uh, coming back in the project description, but also in the project for the, for the students. Um, and the project is still, after 10 years, still actable and uh, changing every year. Um, um, because we still uh, have viruses and we have still have, uh, we have to need about more information, prevention tools and uh, prevention uh, methods. So um, the case for the students isn't changed uh, uh, this year. And we are still looking for new prevention methods and uh, tools. Um, so more people uh, get the right information. So um, they will not be infected by a virus. And we have seen it uh, during all the Corona uh, period of last year, but also, and we saw it in the presentation of Eric, also, new viruses are coming, West Nile virus in the Netherlands. So we hope 
um, that it never will be a, a, a pandemic as COVID now is, but therefore we need all uh, very smart prevention tools from, uh, from the students. Um, so uh, the project is the same, but we have changed a little bit uh, the project itself, a little bit the steps in the project. And first thing we have changed, uh, of we have made more prominent, that's um, the role of the fire scanner expert, the virologue. And uh, normally it, um, information about uh, a virologue is in the very back of the project, but now we have it very prominent in the beginning because we see a lot of virologues at the television every day and um, um, so the information of what a virologue is doing, um, he's working in a laboratory, but also uh, it's very important to communicate about prevention and methods um, we see on the television. Uh, and that's also the part, eh, the part of communication, prevention, uh, uh, how we can change the behavior of, uh, of people. Um, and that has effect on the lifestyle, uh, Marlies told about. It's a, it's a complex mix um, uh, uh, of all these things, which makes it very hard work to be a fire log. And we have, um, have that information now very prominent in the beginning of the project and not at the end. So uh, we hope to see that uh, students know what is a fire log doing. Um, and then, of course, the first step of the real uh, of the project is to becoming an expert, uh, an expert in one of the viruses uh, uh, they are focused on, and um, the, fo uh, the viruses uh, Eric has chosen for this year. These are the most actual viruses now, and, and uh, for every transmission route, there are two or three different viruses where the students can focus on. And you can divide these viruses in the class, but you can also let students choose them by themselves. But if they found another virus, but what is not on this list, but maybe it can be a very risky virus in future, they're also welcome to focus on that. But they have to realize, take a look at which kind of transmission route this virus is uh, uh, using. Um, but uh, uh, at the end, and that's very important when there's a final or uh, the presentation at school, uh, and it doesn't matter what kind of prevention method or a tool they are developed, but the content and the information about the virus must be correct. And there must be a real virus scanner expert. And um, so it's very important to, be, uh, to do this first step the orientation about the virus they have chosen. They know everything about how the virus is spreading, how they're transmitting, maybe mutating or involving, uh, as we see in the corona. Um, then the next step is more focused on the uh, uh, existing prevention methods. And uh, they're taking a look at different existing uh, methods and they have to um, ask themselves, is this prevention method working? And, and that is uh, the link also to the part of what Ms. Lee uh, said, from, uh, do you read the, the good target group? And is the target group, um, uh, 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 do they know of, uh, and do they, uh, uh, how do you say, <laughs> do they know, uh, uh, what they have to do, eh? is, do we have the good language to communicate with uh, the good target group? Mm -hmm. So they uh, don't have questions, of, eh? or are there other um, communication uh, things? So um, uh, the weakness and strengths of the existing prevention method, they make a schedule of that, and, and so they know and, and that's the next step. There, there comes a list of requirements they need for their new uh, uh, idea. And then uh, it's part to uh, going to develop. They're going to develop a new concept. And new this year, we have uh, um, uh, some kind of proof of concept uh, uh, between the, uh, the first concept phase and the prototype. So uh, when they have an ID, they work it out and then uh, they have to test it in the target group, but they can also ask some experts, is this a realistic idea? 
can it work? Eh? Is, uh, uh, is it achievable? Um, do you reach the right target group? Do they understand uh, the information in, in, in their concept? And that's the moment they can uh, ask uh, experts, and maybe one of the virus scanners coaches, they can ask um, uh, for feedback, for tips, for advice. Um, but you can also ask, the students can also ask target group, maybe do some interviews or enquetes or something. Um, and the question is, is this a promising idea of a concept? And after that, when they know it, then they can make a prototype of a first uh, version of that idea, but with all the uh, uh, things they can change uh, uh, um, based on the results of the proof of concept or so, of course. Um, and what they are going to make, uh, it's completely free. Uh, it can be a movie, it can be an animation, it can be uh, an advice. Uh, um, uh, it's up to the students, it's free, but uh, they have to think what is my target group and what kind of projects helps the best for that target group to give the right information. Um, so this year um, um, we have um, I don't know, uh, Valerie, is it now time for questions? You said before, because this is also about the organization of the project. Um, uh, no, no, I uh, I follow the chat. So if there are any questions, uh, I will uh, mention uh, after okay. your, your presentation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, um, we have the, uh, the project and the project description, but now I tell something about the organization. Uh, this year we are with uh, 50 schools in the Netherlands, one in Italy and two in, in Suriname. And also nice to know that um, uh, Kaiser Caro College this year is uh, yeah, going to work yeah. together with the school in Italy. Uh, but And the uh, Lely Lyceum in Amsterdam is going to work together with the school in Suriname. So they will uh, organize some moments with an online meeting so students can ask questions to each other but also give feedback to each other about the project so they are going to work in their own country on the same project on the same viruses they do their own project but there are some connection uh, uh, moments and they give each other uh, feedback so um, then we make it uh, an even more international project than uh, the years before um, this is the timeline, and uh, now we start now with an uh, online teachers meeting, but um, normally the, uh, the project period will be start in January, maybe to April, that will be different at each school. There are also schools are, uh, are still uh, are already busy with the project, and maybe they are finished in January. It's also possible the project is ready. Um, then in uh, February, we will organize a uh, an masterclass uh, for all the students uh, who would like to join. One. And that can be a kickoff moment for students who start with the project, but can also be a moment and where they are learning a lot about viruses, about doing research and how they can uh, and, and, um, uh, test their, uh, uh, their concept. Um, so um, it is necessary that the students have started with the project, but also that it is also not necessary that they have uh, uh, already a, a lot of information about the project. So the masterclass is for everybody uh, in, in Holland, but also in Italy and in Suriname. Um, so that's in, uh, uh, in February. And it's, uh, of course, uh, we at this moment don't, do not know if we can do a live event uh, with, and we can uh, invite students also to come to Rotterdam. But um, and we also have, uh, of course, an online uh, uh, possibility therefore. Now, after that, uh, students are going to work at their schools and um, uh, new this year, there's other virus kind of coaches. The coaches are not new they are every year, but normally they uh, um, are ask and uh, uh, give answers to questions uh, on a virus kind of forum. But this year we uh, um, couple 
every school to one of the coaches so they can uh, uh, organize maybe one or two online meetings between students and the experts so uh, students can ask questions but maybe for some evaluation halfway the project or maybe at the end of the project so that it's uh, uh, that the, the coaches and the, the project more has a face than normally in the last years but all, the forum is still there that they can also ask questions on that forum um, and after this uh, uh, presentation uh, melissa will uh, tell more about the virus scanner coaches but my advice is um, uh, ask a lot to all that uh, coaches they have um more information about the content but they can also give some feedback about the first prevention tool so that moment when you do a proof of concept you can also ask uh, uh, these uh, coaches at that moment and um now uh, we're working to uh, to april to the uh, the final day and that final day we'll do it the same as last year uh, we do it online and we ask uh, from every school, from every class which joined this project to send in uh, a presentation, a short movie when they present their concept of uh, about five minutes. And during that day, an international jury will uh, take a look at all that movies and um, will uh, uh, select uh, winners, winners from schools in Netherlands, a winner from Suriname, a winner from Italy. And in, uh, in the afternoon, we have a live event uh, award ceremony where we present all the winning teams. And uh, also from schools, we are doing the project at this moment, and maybe they are finished in December or in January. We hope that the one team will um, join also the final in, in April. They have to wait, to wait a couple of months, but they can um, uh, do of they have to save their project and their movie uh, for a couple of months, but they can also send in it already and I will uh, uh, sit on it. Um, um, very important, the, the project you can do in Dutch, at, uh, uh, but oh, you can also do it in English, but at the final, the final on, uh, in April, the presentation must be in English because uh, then we have an online of an uh, international public on an uh, international jury so they have to present in in english so um uh, and that's normal in this uh, um, kind of work um and um uh, net, uh, just the same as last year maybe in one class you have two groups with a very innovative concept um now maybe you can send it also in and we also spread some wild cards uh, so maybe for some uh, classes a second team uh, can join the final um now a little bit i've told about the experts uh um, can meet expert at the master class and also take a look at the website with some information blogs news facts so uh, um, ask question on the forum and I will advise to organize an online meeting with, with the uh, coaches. Um, this is about final uh, and five minute presentation and um, maybe important also for the, the schools where the jury will uh, pay attention to this uh, point and we also make a form uh, uh, you can use also at school uh, to uh, select uh, the team for the final. But we take uh, the jury is going to care for uh, what about the contact? Is that right? The concept, uh, but also the uh, the research they have done, the proof of concept. If they uh, take a look at the target group and their idea, if they test it. Uh, Another part will be the creative uh, uh, things. Uh, uh, how creative is there? project is it new is it innovative and very important uh, also in integration you know, what is the social impact of the project and um, what is this going to do with the people who are see this prevention method 
and maybe it's a method it can also use for other viruses and because it's so good and you read a lot of people um, now then the impact is very good and high and that will also um, a very important uh, fact uh, uh, you will take a look at and of course the presentation itself so uh, everything is welcome they can uh, uh, do a normal presentation um, uh, they can make a movie of it uh, it's up to the team how they want to present their concept so that's my uh, presentation and i saw some questions in the chat yes, yes. Uh, if there are people to log in, maybe that's a, a question for uh, uh, Melise. Uh, do you agree, Wilco? Yes, and I think Melise, I was going to tell the, something about that right now. I think. Yeah, yes, that's true. I'm going to tell and explain more about it in a yeah in a minute. If I can start now, I can do it right away. But I don't know if it's possible. Can I start with my presentation? Great. And can everyone hear me, by the way? Yes, we hear yeah. you uh, okay. loud and clear. OK, great. OK, and everyone can see my presentation as well? Yes, we do. OK, great. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is well, Melissa. And I'm one of the fire scanner coaches, and it's my third year that I'm working on the project. And besides my um, yeah, work and help as a coach, I'm also a medical student, and I'm in my fourth year of medicine. And right now I'm doing my internships in the hospital. Um, and my interest goes to the uh, sur surgery and also the um, yeah, the virus and all those kind of things. So that's why I love to work as a coach as well. Um, so today I'm going to tell you a bit more about the website of Virus Scanner, the platform, and uh, also the social media. Okay. Well, here you see the other two coaches of this year. On the left side, uh, you see Elisa. Uh, she will uh, um, introduce herself after my presentation. So um, we will see her in a short time. And on the right side, you see Leona van Leeuwen. Um, Leona is a researcher at Fire Science in Rotterdam. And uh, before she uh, started as a researcher, uh, she was also a doctor um, in the cardiology and in the intensive care departments. And with our experience, uh, she could tell and explain a lot about all the different viruses. And during the project, you can always ask uh, all your questions and um, comments to the coaches. And um, what Wilco already told is that uh, you could also arrange some um, online Zoom meetings or team sessions. And um, after this presentation and after the um, teacher day, you will receive an email address with uh, your corresponding uh, coach. And then, um, yeah, then the forum. Um, and what Ans already asked was if you need an, um, yeah, some uh, in usernames and passwords, and that's indeed right. Um, and on the forum, you can ask all your questions um, and the experts will do their best to answer these questions. And you can also discuss a uh, specific subject and transmission routes uh, with teams and other schools. So on the right side, you see a, a small, um, yeah, um, example of how the forum looks. And um, you could find it uh, on the Fire Scanner homepage. Um, and you have to click then on the English version of the website. And then you go to the e-learning tab. And then you find the forum. So then you need to log in. And if you don't have the password yet or you forgot your username, um, you can email me. So you can see your, my email address. And um, it's important to choose the right transmission route. Uh, to the relating question. So there are different subheadings and um, that correspond then to the transmission route. And then the coach will answer the question as soon as possible. 
Then um, we have also an uh, other important rule on the fiber scanner uh, website, which is the pre and post test. Um, and we ask all the participants to um, yeah, fill in the pre-test before uh, the fiber scanner project. And uh, at the end of the virus uh, fire scanner project, we ask you to uh, do the post test. And the answers give us useful information about the expectations and um, yeah, the already prior knowledge that the uh, participants have. Uh, so we could use that then. And it's uh, anonymously, so we don't know um, yeah, who it exactly is. And then um, there are also some other online tools on the fire scanner website here on the left side, you see the blog um, and there we post all our fresh news so just updated this uh, blog of uh, the of, our, uh, of Eric van Gorp and you can also see some events and um, yeah, important information. And what's also very necessary and useful for the students is uh, the e-learning tab. You see that on the right side there, they can find a lot of information about the transmission pads and yeah, what's, for example, exactly a virus. And, and also a an useful tool is just the RFAM to find information about the viruses. Then we have uh, an uh, Instagram account and Facebook page. Uh, you could follow us and the uh, Instagram page uh, is called virus.ganner and it would be nice if uh, students can tag um, yeah, the, the Instagram if they are working on the project and then we can share it and then the Instagram is also more up to date. I don't know if we have time enough um, because then I can introduce the website uh, directly but I don't know if there's time for that. Uh, yes, there's time. And maybe, um, Ans, uh, I've uh, read your question. Mm -hmm. uh, we come to this after the, um, uh, the show uh, through of uh, Melissa through the website. Uh, and then we come to the code to log in and also to the pretest. So uh, we'll come to that. Okay. See, uh, do you see now that's loading the website? Uh, not yet. We see your presentation. Okay, I think I have to stop this then with sharing and share, share my other screen, which is here. Okay. Now you see, I think the website, is it right? Yes, that's right. Okay, so for example, if you want to go um, to the forum, you need to go to the e-learning tab, which is here, and then you go to the forum. The internet's a bit slowly. And then um, here you see all the different kinds of uh, subheatings. So for example, if, if someone has the project of Corona, he needs to go to this tab. And then here are a lot of questions already asked about Corona. Um, and here you must fill in uh, your username and your password. And if you don't have that yet, you need to email me and then I can uh, yeah, make your own username and password. Um, and only the teachers will receive a username and a password. So it's very important that you as a teacher collect all the questions that your uh, students have. Then uh, we have also the blog, which you can see here. And here we, up, uh, yeah, here we post all our uh, latest and greatest news and a lot of nice uh, blogs as well. Um, then where uh, the students can find a lot of um, information is here. So you go to the e-learning and then to the learning materials. There are handy and uh, illustrative presentations and a lot of videos as well. And where you can find the pretest is here as well at the e-learning page. So you go to the pretest, and then you go to the next one, and you need to the students need to choose their own um, school and fill in uh, yeah where they attended. And there are then some questions. It's not it's, will not take that much time. Um, yeah, and I think these are the most important things of the website. Melissa, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for this uh, run through. 
Uh, the questions of Ans are um, are linking uh, to this uh, to the website. Mm-hmm. So uh, for the teachers um, who had a login code uh, during previous editions, uh, when you go to the forum, maybe uh, Melissa, can you show um, the forum and when uh, when you would like to to ask a question? So this login tab when you scroll um you need to go to yeah for example if you is if the subject is here corona you need to go here and then underneath the page you see it here but i yeah i don't have a username for this so if you if you uh if you had um a login code your username is is your uh your email address and if you had a, a login code during the previous edition, you can say, um, if I'm correct, uh, I forgot my password. So you can first try that. Uh, and otherwise, um, Melissa, can you share your email address in the chat? So yes. uh, you can write it down. Yeah. And otherwise, if you forget, if that doesn't work, because many people have a username with which is the first letter of their first name and then their last name uh, written out. So I don't know if it works with email address, but I will give my um, email address as well. Yes, great. Thank you. Are there more questions? Ah, there is it already. So for the yeah. teachers who have a question about this, uh, Melissa's uh, email address is in the chat. And the second question of Ans uh, was, uh, is the pretest already available? Yeah. Um, for uh, most of the schools, yes. But uh, if, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it has to be updated. So, um, uh, for the for the 2022 uh, edition, so it will be in about two weeks. It will be available. Yeah, and and uh, and to answer the last question of Ans is yes, you can use your old uh, password. Great. If you still know that, and otherwise, I can make a new one for you. You're Great. welcome. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Hans. And uh, Yuri uh, already sent uh, an email to Melissa. Great. And great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much, Melissa. And if you have any questions uh, regarding uh, the forum or the website, um, your login details, uh, you have uh, Melissa's uh, email address. Um, for now, we go then to um, the presentation of Elisa, one of the other virus scanner coaches, and she gives uh, an introduction about the scientific evaluation of the virus scanner program. So, hello, Elisa. If Elisa is in the room. Yeah, Elisa is there. You're muted, uh, Elisa. We see you, but we can't hear you yet. We can't hear you, Elisa. And otherwise, in the meantime, um, Eric, I have a question for you because for maybe for the uh, schools that already attended the virus scanner program, um, they know uh, the answer to this question, but why do we need the next generation to find new prevention tools and solutions? Why, why the virus scanner project? Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question, Valerie. <laughs> um, we can face infectious diseases as a threat, uh, like in COVID, and but there's another thing, uh, infectious, the world of infectious disease is also a world of interest <clears throat> because we live, uh, we need to live in harmony with, with uh, viruses, bacteria, parasites. Um, so I had the statement in the beginning of my presentation, a virus-free world, is that a solution? No, that's not a solution. 
because the fires free world wouldn't exist. So we need bacteria, viruses. We live. Uh, we need to live with them in harmony. Uh, so they also keep us uh, keep us healthy. But if we are disturbing the balance, then they can cause disease, and they get the chance to make us uh, uh, sick, and then we may even die. So it's a matter of balance, living in balance with each other, but also with our environment. And that's <clears throat> what I mentioned, the One Health uh, approach. And well, the other thing, of course, is if, if you start young, uh, you have a benef benefit during uh, your entire life from this knowledge and this awareness. Uh, so the sooner you start, uh, the more benefit you have. Yes, thank you. And maybe also um, something about uh the creativity of youngsters we need more yeah more input from that corner yeah if you think uh, i think uh, um wilk already talked about that you could say well if you're talking about the world of infectious diseases uh, then you need uh, experts in, in bioscience of course we do need them because they develop vaccines and better treatment and we work on understanding of disease but you also need people with uh, that are very creative in communication uh, and, and bringing the message. So it, it matters us all, and we need all expertise together, um, you know, to, to work in this in this interesting field. Thank you, Eric. If there are any questions uh, regarding this, uh, we can uh, come back to it during closure. Um, now I would like to give the word to Elisa, if that's possible. Maybe Elisa should log out and try to log in again. Elisa? Yes, we can try that. Yeah, we can try that. Yes, yeah. there she is again. Hi, Elisa. Let me see. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't seem to work. <clears throat> We see you, but we can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> um, Maybe is it her microphone? Maybe she must look at her microphone settings or speaker settings. Is yes, she sir. on headphone or is she on a computer? Maybe yes. that is uh, she can look for. Yeah, it must has to do with something with that. Uh... I think it is. Uh... Hello. Yeah. yeah. There you yes. are. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. We mute ourselves and thank you, Anz, for uh, for thinking with us. Yeah. We give the word. Uh, okay. Sure. Nice. Uh, okay. I never did this before. Um, can you see my procession now? Or yes, we do. Yes. Okay. So we see your slides. Okay. And maybe so, you can, uh, yes, yes, great. Okay. <laughs> Hi uh, everyone. I'm uh, Elisa and I'm a medical student at the Erasmus University in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, I have now completed my bachelor's uh, degree and I will start my medical internship next year as a part of my master's. And in the meantime, I'm one of the virus, coach, virus scanner coaches this year. And besides being a coach, we also um, uh, do a scientific research. And uh, during the virus scanner project, we will investigate the influence of uh, virus scanner on behavior change of the students. And uh, we're, we're doing this through the AAB model, knowledge, attitude, and behavior. And on the PowerPoint, you see the, the, this model and how knowledge and attitude can lead to uh, behavior change. And in the previous study that was done um, in 2015, we learned that social influence was also an important component 
for uh, students to lead to behavior change. And that is why we also implement this component uh, in the questionnaires for the students. And uh, this is how we, we will do it. Um, on the sheet, sheet you see uh, how we implement the KAB model in the questionnaire. So uh, for example, a question about uh, attitude. I think it's important to have knowledge about uh, viruses. And uh, yeah, for example, social influence, I sometimes talk about vaccine preventive um, yeah, infections with my uh, virus infections with my family or friends. And uh, yeah, we made a questionnaire which will measure the difference of the knowledge, attitude in, and behavior of students before and after the virus scanner program. So we will do uh, a pre-test and this uh, is during the kickoff lesson. And uh, we also do a post-test and this is, this is after the final presentation uh, at school. And uh, the teachers will also receive an a, a email uh, via a, a link to the pre-test. We will do this uh, this week. And um, yeah, after we did do this questionnaires, the success and efficiency of the education model on the children will be evaluated. So it, oh, <laughs> it will be very interesting to see what the impact of virus scanner is on the different uh, countries on behavioral change of students. And it will also be very interesting to see if the exchange pro pro program maybe have a, a special impact on the results. <laughs> so this was it. <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Can you uh, uh, tell us a, a bit more about the social influence? What, what do you mean with that? Um, well, there are a few uh, questions you can ask if uh, yeah, if you have uh, parents have a, have a lot of influence on your um, children. Yeah. So if your parents say, uh, I don't want you to uh, vaccinate, then there's a, a, a good chance the children will not do that. So yeah, uh, that's a, a important component for uh, yeah, students to lead to behavior change. And that's why we also want to uh, implement this in the questionnaires to uh, study this. Thank you. Clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Elisa. Uh, I'm uh, looking in the chat if there are any questions for Elisa right now. So the the research of Elisa is uh, additional to the to the project, uh, scientific uh, research of Elisa. Um, and we go to the closure. And uh, if you have any questions, you can still write them down. I see it. I read it. Um, but for now, I would like to mention uh, we have a beautiful group of schools in Suriname, in Italy and in the Netherlands. And of course, through the forum, you can read uh, the questions of, of, of each school or uh, of each class. Uh, but you can also reach out to each other um, through the website. You can, you can see uh, which schools are attending in the pre and post test. And of course, through show, social media. So there are possibilities to, to get more feel of the, of, the, of the international vibe, actually, of the project. Although we are uh, online mostly uh, now, because, of course, uh, because of the measurements. So I wanted to measure uh, to to mention that, um, and if there are no questions right now, don't forget to read uh, to write down the email of uh, Melise. Uh, it's in the chat. And uh, for now, then uh, thank you all very much for joining this teacher afternoon or morning, of course, for uh, for Suriname. Uh, thank you, schools. Eric, Marlies, Wilco, uh, the virus scanner coaches, Elisa and Melise, and Eric Sigman uh, for hosting uh, technically this session. And we are very much looking forward to a wonderful virus scanner edition 2022. So uh, for now, thank you all so much and uh, hope to see you soon again. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>